Alright guys, I'm going to go ahead and teach you the little introduction to ActionScript. What we're going to go through first is just some basic elements of ActionScript that are really important whether you coded before or not. Uh, if you have coded before you'll understand them a little bit differently. I'm going to go through variables, instances, properties, functions and methods, event handlers and event listeners, classes, and conditional statements. So. Starting first, let's go ahead and start at variables. What I have here is um, an FLA document that I went ahead and created. I had renamed actions layer to, or the first layer to actions, locked it, and created another layer called animation, which I went ahead and pulled over from the components menu, a button onto the stage. So now it is in my library. Now, basically, what a variable is, is it's something that holds information. If you're creating, like, say, a car, like a build-your-own-car application in Flash, it would hold stuff like the number of doors, whether you have two doors or four doors, uh, the number of tinted windows, number of power door locks, all front to, back to, none, stuff like that. Or say you're doing an accounting application and you really need to hold accounting variables that are going to change over time. Well, instead of finding out what those are over time, calculating them out yourself, you can throw in a variable. Now what a variable is, is actually this right up here. So I went ahead and typed one out. I'm going to go ahead and type another one out just to show you. Anytime you do a variable, you do var for variable, uh, the name of your variable, and then you data type it, which I'll show you in a second. But you don't necessarily have to data type, technically, if I just add a semicolon at the end of this line, because that's what you do at the end of all uh, statements in Flash. You go ahead and add a semicolon at the end. This is a completely valid variable. It doesn't tell us a whole lot, and it's not used for anything right now. So basically this is just a holder for pretty much any type of information you want however when you're coding and you get into more complex and in-depth applications you really want to data type it and there's a couple of reasons one is it lets you as the coder know what you're doing if you look at a variable you forget what it what it does because you didn't name it specifically enough or you weren't sure whether it was holding a number property or a movie clip or something like that you can look at the data type and that will tell you another reason is if you start getting errors if you have your variable data type it will give you a more specific error and that is very very helpful when you're trying to debug your flash applications so to data type, uh, type it you will just type in var whatever your variable name is and then colon and then now you can type in the data type a couple of popular ones are number, uh, boolean, and uh, string. Those are some of the most common, anyway, used for your first Flash application. So a data type is just telling it what kind of information it is. For in this case, it's a number, so I can type in that this number is zero for now. Then I can edit it later. Up here, you'll see that I have a variable type of a string. Uh, you can have a variable type of a movie clip, whatever you want. So to continue on, um, we're going to use this string variable up here a little bit later and show you that a little bit better. Go ahead and go into instances real quick. So instances, I did go over in my last videos, uh, the flash introduction part one and two. However, I'm going to go over it real quick again. If you go over to the components panel, you can drag a button onto the stage. If you don't have that components panel, you can go to Window and then Components. Now, um, I went ahead and dragged it onto the stage, which this puts it in my library. Now, I have an instance of it on here, which means that I just have one of them. Technically, I can add as many as I want. I can throw another button right here. Not going to, but you can. And here you go, you have you now have a button on the stage. I went ahead and named this. You always want to give it an instance name. And if you 
click on it and then click the properties which if you don't have you can also go up to window up here to get that you'll see the you'll see the uh, instance name kind of grayed out in that box if you haven't put anything in there yet that's fine and then you put whatever your name is now since this is a button I'm naming it my button underscore BTN BTN lets ActionScript know that it's a button helps you out if you have to debug also um, brings up the IntelliSense for a button when you start typing with it which I'll show you next so now we're gonna write a little ActionScript to make this button actually do something so we'll go up to our actions layer right here and here I'll go ahead and expand this window down a little bit and we have my variable to is a string the store was closed is just what the string says now we have the button right here and what it is I'll show you what the, why that underscore button is important or underscore MC if it's a movie clip but we have my button and then dot brings up the uh, a lot of options for it so if I try and type in label which is the label property that I have for it boom pops up then equals and then whatever I want the button to actually say followed by semicolon so since I already have that below I'm gonna go ahead and delete this so my button dot label equals hello so instead of it saying label like you see down here in the libraries panel it's gonna say hello next thing to go into is uh, functions and methods this is going to be a function right here how you make a function is you type in function space give your function a name in this case it is my function and then you sub uh, you give it some parameters which is basically what kind of function it is it's like data typing a function uh, for the most part you're you're always going to use void especially in your beginning applications it's just saying that it's not returning any values with, at the end of your function and I'll go into that a little bit later so in this function I went ahead and created another variable my text underscore text which is a text field and this variable creates a new text field one thing very important to know about this is that this alone will not add it to the stage you don't see a text field up there now or if you remember you wouldn't have seen a text field and all this does is creates a new basically idea of a text field so to speak it hasn't been added to the display list so no one's gonna see it yet I go ahead and set some properties my text underscore text equals my variable to what I did was I set the text in this text field to equal what my variable to says which is a string that says the store was closed set the width and height of what that text field can be in bounding box wise and then I added it to the display list using the add child method add child just make sure that it's visible so this function a function does nothing alone and by itself because nothing has told this function to run